people from all ages. And one of the areas that I have uh, been really looking at lately is the social and emotional needs of gifted kids. And there's a conference we went to last year that was very educational. One of the things that was mentioned at this conference was about kids on the spectrum who had um, glucose metabolism that was variable than other children and seemed to have a crash in their blood sugar at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. And so there was a glycemic dysregulation and these kids were being called bipolar. So at the conference, which was mostly attended by psychologists and parents and other professionals, I think we were two psychiatrists there, I was wondering about um, you know, this whole um, area of giftedness and the spectrum and autism and Asperger's and how that plays into um, schizophrenia and bipolarity later in life, but especially if you have any data on this glucose metabolism, because you were talking about glycemic control yesterday with schizophrenia, and I'm just wondering if there's any data out there on that that I should know about. Not to my knowledge, there are no hard data about the relationship between glycemic control and the diagnostics of moving uh, for those three disorders, autism, schizophrenia, and bipolar. Uh, but one thing we, we know is that female or pregnant females with gestational diabetes uh, have ten have a tenfold increase in producing a schizophrenic offspring uh, if, if there is uh, gestational diabetes during the pregnancy. Now, what that does have to do with glycemic control during childhood may or may not be there, but it could be a relationship. Uh, there's also a gene on chromosome 16 where if you inherit one allele, the copy number variation, one allele uh, will make you autistic. If you inherit three alleles, it will make you schizophrenic or bipolar. If you're two, you're wrong. So again, showing that some, some of those three disorders do share uh, some gene. That gene, by the way, has to do with brain size, uh, inhibiting brain size. But like I said, I have not seen any study of children uh, that interesting meeting you went to with yeah. about, about it's, called, it's, it's called SENG, S-E-N-G, Social and Emotional Needs of the Gifted because that top two percentage yes. of twice exceptional kids yes. have learning disabilities and they have uh, giftedness and they tend to often later on be called bipolar and be called all kinds of psychiatric disorders. So the book is uh, Misdiagnosis and Dual Diagnosis of Gifted yeah. Kids by Edward Emend. Well, I'll tell you um, about giftedness, yeah. uh, the good study about giftedness, which mm -hmm. is more common in bipolar, as you're right, yeah. uh, as in childhood and adolescence. But in our study in Sweden, 185 students, high school students, they followed them up over over 10 years after graduating from high school and found out who became schizophrenic, who became bipolar. And they looked at their grades in high school. And the patients who became schizophrenic later uh, actually were, were doing poorly. In high school, their grades were going down. And the patients, the people who became bipolar in high school, they excelled. Their yeah. grades actually went up between uh, uh, 10th grade and 12th grade. So there's that, that's a difference between those two disorders in terms of performance in high school as a precursor of an illness. That's all I can say about that. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. My pleasure.